I, I live in in uh, right next to Yorktown High School over there oh. near uh, actually near near Chain Bridge. Sure. So, sure. Yeah. So I've been uh, I've been here. I went to UVA for uh, undergrad and and uh, in law school. I was there when you were when you were there. Yeah. And then I I, I practiced law for a while. Um, but I've been in sales most of my career. Okay. So uh, yeah. So but I, I've you know I've followed you closely and I, I've told a lot of Tommy Amaker stories over the years. Well. <laughs> I hope I hope you I hope you did some lying. I mean, because I needed it, you know. So yeah. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, you you always were you always were a humble guy, even even back in the old days. Man, so, thank um, you. Oh yeah, yeah. So just real quickly, just Nova Legends. Um, I was riding my bike. Um, uh, I was on the side of the road one day. Um, a pedal broke on Idlewood over there, you know, near between Marshall High School and George Mason. Yeah. And some good Samaritan offered me to help, and it ended up. Uh, being Keith Leonard, who played at Annadale against you. He was a year in front of you. He was an all-district player. Um, he ended up playing goalie at UVA. He off offered to help. And then he said, you know, Julian, I see you post a lot of high school basketball stuff on Facebook. You know, I have some things I want to send you. I guess he didn't want to post them himself. And I was like, well, sure. So the, one of the first things he sent me was a picture of you laying the ball in. And <laughs> Keith is way in the back, you know, woefully out of position. So we, we posted it and other stuff. And some people kept saying, why do you keep posting like random high school basketball stuff? So I said, well, let's get together a group, uh, a Facebook group and reach out to all of our friends. We got like Jackie Funk from Woodson. Folks oh, wow. from, oh, we got Jack. We got folks. Some, she may pop in and say hi real fast. Yeah. We got folks from Reston and all, all over the county, Mount Vernon, TC. And uh, we just started getting our friends. Red Jenkins was involved and he sure. got like, Tam he got Tammy and Pete. And it's been a great networking, learning the history of the Northern region. We have a rich history of of, of basketball and some of the things that guys that like you have done and and like coach Jimmy Lewis who was the first black uh, player to play in the uh, northern region the first black player to play at uh, West Virginia uh, the first I think the black assistant coach at Duke I believe yeah that's right we have, yeah we have so many stories I guess so so anyway um, that's that's kind of what we are and we it's a strong network we got great pictures standings and we talk a lot about about the stars of, of the northern region and I remember one day we had this argument was Tommy Amaker a, was he a James Lee kid or was he a Bailey's Crossroad kid? And so everybody's claiming you. So why don't we just start off, you know, maybe you can, you can start yeah, a little bit about your, your basketball. Yeah, well, let's jump right into that one right away. Well, first of all, thank you. Th thank you for inviting me and, and making me a part of uh, something that's, um, you know, near and dear to my heart, which is certainly basketball, but also Northern Virginia, Northern region. And so I, I can't thank you enough for including me because, uh, We've had a lot of really good players and wonderful people. And to think that I'm one of those individuals really warms my heart. And I appreciate that. And so oh, wow. I started at James Lee, um, you know, James Lee Recreation Center. That, that's my rec. That's my home. And mm -hmm. I would walk there. My grandmother lived within a uh, stone's throw of that. And that's where my mother lives now. Uh, so that's been my, my home area. So I grew up playing. Uh, at James Lee for, for Mike Harris, Red Fox. I don't know if you know that name, but yeah, he was one of right. our youth league coaches. Sure. Uh, we also had uh, Billy King was a uh, Baylor's Crossroads guy. So hmm. maybe that's where some of the connection and maybe the crossover. But, uh, but Billy grew up in the Baylor's Crossroad area and played there. But I, I was a James Lee guy. You're a James Lee guy. And then did you play uh, travel for James Lee? Because I know when, when I was when I was playing uh, – they called them the young JLs. I forgot we called the James Lee team. We, 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 my, my youth, we were the Panthers, uh, the mm -hmm. James Lee Panthers when I was coming along. And then I played for, I don't know if you know the name, Mr. He just passed away, but Coach Reggie Kitchen. Uh, oh, yeah. Mr. Kitchen, yeah. He, he was our AAU coach, mm -hmm. and he coached all of us, and we would always have our practices at James Lee there because he actually worked there. And so uh, all of us, you know, God, we had De you know Tucker from Mount Vernon. We had uh, you know, uh, I mean, we, we had everybody, you know, Michael Jackson from South Lakes and Billy oh, King okay. and uh, Tyrone Shaw, you know, oh, yeah. I mean, so we, we had a lot of guys that uh, Gerald Jackson, who, you know, was WL guy. And so, you know, we were all over the area, but, uh, but Coach Kitchen was our coach. And, but we had James Lee was our kind of our base. That, that's mm -hmm. where we worked out. That's where we practiced. That's where we came back and we won the national 16 under AAU. And that's what we brought back and had the trophy and took the pictures, which are still in James Lee. But I won two AAU national championships. One is a 12 and under with the Northern, Northern, uh, Northern Region All-Stars, Northern Virginia All-Stars with Billy King. Uh -huh. Billy and I won two national championships together once 
12 and under than one with 16. And then we end up playing in college together at Duke. So we go all the way back for right. sure. Did you guys talk about like one day you'd play college together? Did you guys ever? We, we did. I always would tease Billy. You know, Billy was, Billy was like six foot three in the sixth grade. I mean, everyone yeah. thought Billy was going to be like seven, five. I mean, yeah. And so I would always tease him and say, listen, man, you know, I'm your point guard. You make sure that wherever you, wherever they want you, he was getting letters from Kentucky in junior high school. So I said, yeah. you know, you just make sure that wherever you're going to go, you can't go without me. I said, that, exactly. was, that was the deal that I would tell him. But, but Billy was a great, obviously has been a wonderful yeah. friend and a year behind me, you know, so he was yeah. a year behind me, younger than me, but we were, mm -hmm. grew up together and played together for, for quite some time. Yeah, he used to come by Robinson. We had a guy named Eric Richter. I don't know if you know Oh, Eric. sure. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, he yeah. Was, we were friends. He was a great soccer player. He played yes. basketball too. But yes. Eric was one of those guys who he grew early too. So he was a really big guard when he was young. Yes. When he got to high school, he was a real little guy. And yes. he, he was a good high school player, but you know, it was just it was just kind of a growth thing for him, I think. Yes. So. I remember Eric, and you're right. He was a very good athlete, much more good. developed than a lot of guys at his younger age. Yeah. And uh, he was so physically outdeveloped people and was stronger and and you know, I, I know, I don't know. I remember Eric and his father. Um, so yeah. yeah, for all those guys. So, um, you know, uh, Mrs. Amaker uh, was a teacher at, you know, Fairfax County. So, you know, we, it, it came to be a time when you were going to choose high school. I hope, I hope I'm not making any news here, but uh, uh, you know, what, what were some of your thought processes? I mean, you know, obviously uh, coach Jenkins is an amazing coach. But what were you thinking about the time when you were going to start high school? Well, you're right. My mother taught. My mother taught for 50 years, by the way, uh, in the Fairfax County system. Um, and, and she's still doing very well. And, and oh, great. Uh, so I'm very, very blessed and very lucky. And but she taught uh, for so many years. And, and obviously one of the one of the perks or one of the privileges of being a teacher in the county was that you could go to any your children, uh, family members could go to any school in the county. And so I grew up, you know, with going to uh, Coach Jenkins basketball camp, the Northern Virginia basketball school at George yeah. Mason. And so I would go there and I got to know him, but I knew he was, Coach Jenkins was considered, you know, one of the best coaches and teachers in all of Washington, D.C. area. And mm -hmm. I fell in love with Coach Jenkins and I knew that I wanted to play for him. And so I, you know, I was supposed to go to Falls Church High School where my sister mm -hmm. went, my other family members and um, but I wanted to play for Coach Jenkins. And I always tell people now, I can't believe I did it because it's, you know, it was one of those where I only knew two people at the school before I enrolled there was Coach Jenkins and Pete Holbert. Yeah. And so it was only two people that I knew in the entire school before I started yeah. there in ninth grade. And yeah. I just, you know, it's, it's funny, you know, how you, I didn't even give it a second thought at the time, but I just knew I wanted to play for Coach. And, uh, and he's been that in everything more than that for me as a, as a teacher, as a coach, as a mentor, uh, as, a, as a surrogate father, as a friend. I mean, and, and he's still doing very well, as you probably know. You know, he yeah. hasn't changed a bit, still looks the same. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And, uh, exactly. and so I love him dearly. Yeah. He's more than a coach. He's an advocate. I mean, he, there's, there's a lot of great coaches around, and they do a great job. But Coach Jenkins advocates for his players. So, you know, when you have him in your, in, in your corner, you know, you're going to you're going you're going to get far. You're going to have every opportunity to go. He, far. he he is an advocate for his players, and he's an advocate for for good people. You know, so other good players and good people in Northern Virginia, he would always you know make sure people knew about other good players and good people. So I I always know that about Coach Jenkins. And another thing about him is that uh, I've been around some of the very best. I've been very lucky with I mean, Coach K at Duke and other amazing coaches and people through my life. There's never been a better teacher of basketball than coach Jenkins and I and I've 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 been lucky enough to play for whether it's Gene Cady, Lou Olson I mean I you know you you name some of the you know yeah. uh, the greats of the game and there's never been a better teacher that I've been around than coach Jenkins yeah he's, he's a great guy uh, about about 15 years ago he saw me in a gym somewhere and uh, he said Julian Brown Robinson class 84 and you know I was a very yes. mediocre yes. player he knew it, it just it, it meant the world to me that Coach Jenkins. He knew who I was. I've mean, got so yeah. He he he's like that, and you always doesn't surprise like me. Yeah, I mean that's 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 Coach Jenkins. So all right, so you're going to go to Woodson, and you didn't you didn't you know your family didn't get the house. Frank Smith. The rumor was that you and Frankie Smith were getting houses all over. <laughs> I talked to Frank. I talked to Frank uh, a week ago about this. But you're you're you're, you're starting your freshman year. That was the first time I ever saw you play. Was in a regional tournament. Um, at, at Robinson, 
and you were a freshman guard. And I, I had never, I mean, it, you were you were small, but you were you were tiny. so you, you were tiny. But the, the difference was you were an amazing defender at a very young age. And this is this is not um, during those days, we didn't really talk about defense in that manner. But you would lock people down like I had never seen. And I tried, I remember I tried to play like you. We all tried to play like you. So but, so when I saw you play, that was your your freshman year. What did you think going to Woodson? You got Pete Holbert, who's got big personality. Um, I mean, coming in as a freshman, that's probably not the easiest place to start. No, no. It, you know what? I, I was very lucky, um, you know, because I, I had great teammates. And, and then obviously with Coach grooming me and, and thinking, you know, of me down the road. Uh, but being a, you know, being a freshman, I, I, I didn't know that I would, you know, make varsity, you know, a, as a freshman. I mean, I, you know, as you mentioned, I, mean, I was, he, Coach Jenkins used to always say I was, I was five foot seven, 108 pounds soaking wet. Uh, you know, that, that was his description of me as, as a freshman. And so I was, you know, very lucky that I was able to make the varsity as, as a freshman. And, but being uh, around Pete and watching the older guys, and Woodson had a great program, you know, like that was the thing that always impressed me of how the program was conducted. And we, you know, we ran, Coach ran it like a college. I mean, it, you know, college practices and how we traveled. And I mean, just everything about it was first class in the way that he wanted our program to be known for. And so I was lucky. As a matter of fact, we were just talking just uh, just the other day. and He was reminding me of playing in a tournament in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. It was a great mm. Christmas tournament. And yeah. it was always famous because Wilt Chamberlain played in it. Mm. Uh, but we were in it and we played against Roman Catholic. And some of the things that he was able to do for us made our program, you know, it separated us in some ways from some other program. We played in the jell League in Washington, D.C. for the Summer mm -hmm. League. Uh, mm -hmm. Not many Northern Virginia teams were, were doing that, but we did it. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, we got, to, we got to know the basketball in the area. Uh, but playing as a first year as a freshman was such an honor. And, and I was always uh, appreciative of especially guys like Pete Holbert, who, you know, took me under his wing and, you know, kind of helped me along the way and, and showed me some of the ropes and actually took me you know, when some of the schools wanted him to stop by, whether it's, uh, you know, University of Maryland or other schools where they want him to come over for watch a game or watch a practice. And, you know, he would he would want me to go with them. And so I, it was yeah. it was amazing for me to be a part of that. Yeah, I was, I'd, I'd watch you compete against uh, against Mike Tissall at Robinson and all the guys. I mean, yeah. there's so much talent. There's so much talent in the northern reason Mike might have been a year or two older yeah yeah but there was no. so there was so much talent in the region and us like a guy like Pete Hobart was a god and yes. you know one thing we've talked about a lot on the group is um the, the division one players no longer hang around at public school in northern Virginia anymore right. I mean this year the northern region player of the year uh, uh Chris Kazemka I went to school with his father he doesn't have a division one scholarship yet um you know my senior year the year after he graduated we had eight division one players in the 16 northern district um you know what what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? And and I mean, obviously, that's that's just the way it's it's gone. There's really nothing you can do. You can't put that genie back in the bottle, can you? No, you're right. It, it, it's so unfortunate, you know, with with that how that has happened. But you know, there's been growth in other areas for for those particular players and and, and prospects because they're they're playing in different venues. They're you know they're they're with the summer basketball how it's conducted and the travel and as you mentioned, you know, going to different programs, going, going to different schools, whether it's a prep school. Uh, I mean, there's just so many more options and opportunities for kids, which is a great thing across the yeah. board, not just, right. you know, Northern, you know, not just Northern Virginia basketball, Northern region basketball, but it's across the board for exposure and opportunities for kids today, which is a great thing. But one of some of the things that have, you know, kind of been lost by the wayside, as you mentioned, would be the kind of the, going to the schools in your in your area your region building up that kind of tradition and history that we were able to do and be a part of so you know there are pluses and minuses with all those things so i've been able to one of the things you learn as we all have to do is is to adapt um, yeah. you know if things change kid you know times change and but you have to adapt and, and understand and, and respect it and have an open mind to see how it has made us even better you know in some ways we've lost some things you know, yeah. but, but we've also gained a lot as well. Yeah. One thing that they, that they we've lost is, um, you know, when you guys played TC Williams in the 83 regional final, I hate to bring that back up. No, uh, I, it's okay. I understand. <laughs> I understand. But, 
we 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 had we had a poll on the group. Uh, what was the best game in the history of the Northern Region? Uh, number one was uh, the late Braddock Robinson seven overtime games when Hubert Davis when they beat Robinson in the seven overtime. That was a regular season game. And the second game was when Grant Hill got upset by Wakefield uh, and Kenya Hunter. That game. The third game was your guys' game against uh, T.C. Williams in the eighty three final. I mean, I, I, it was there were six thousand people there. I mean, all your games were like that. I mean, you you played in front of packed houses. That environment was was gone. But I mean, th- the day of that game, I mean, I couldn't wait all day to be there. I mean, it was unbelievable. Uh, the environment. Do you do you uh, ever look back at those T.C. T.C. always had unfortunately you guys' number and it was yep. just luck of the draw it was it was always a one-point game you guys had beat them during the regular season yep but it seems like tc when it came to postseason they always had found a way to get to the state tournament and back then only one team only one team would only go one team that that's you're so right and it, there were some great amazing rivalries and games and and obviously that you know makes up of, of tremendous players and coaches and people you know throughout the uh the programs and in the schools and and it was such a as you mentioned, the the intensity behind it, the the um, you know, as you mentioned, the the uh, w- couldn't wait for it to happen that day, or even the the build up for it that whole week, or you know, whatever you go. I mean, it, it, those things are uh, are priceless. You know, we'll we'll live for however long we live. We'll always have those memories and in those yeah. moments, and obviously some some where we won and some where we lost, and that one in particular was such a gut wrenching loss because we really wanted to deliver you know, the state th- the state championship for Coach Jenkins. I mean, and we had a hell yeah. of a team my yeah. senior year. I mean, we were, they were really good. We were really good. And, but you're right. We were just so un- unlucky, unfortunate. And they were better that day. You know, that's how it works. And, uh, but no, I remember that. I remember, as you mentioned, the environment, and, you know, the energy and the enthusiasm and all the things that come with that. It was really, really fun. I'm lucky. I'm lucky yeah. to have, be able to say that I was a part of it. It was, and I remember uh, again, probably not the best memory, but I remember the last possession. You had you had maybe three or four seconds to go, and you almost got all the way down court. So I, I believe TC was either shooting a foul shot or they somehow you guys got the ball back, and you went seventy eight feet. And I don't know if you shot it or you went all in the lane. Oh, I I I, I I I let it go, and I was it was after the buzzer. You know, the buzzer, I, and, I and did, it went in, and it went in. I didn't get it, it off in. in time, and it went in. That's exactly right. That's exactly oh, right. And I remember the TC, uh, the crowd and the cheerleaders, everyone round to the court. And it was it was it was a really tough loss. And, and you were talking about Woodson's talent. Woodson was a very different than TC. TC, Tyrone Shaw was a very special player, but he was very underrated until his senior year. Yes. They, they basically had a lot of solid uh, players. They were deep. They had great athletes, but they didn't have a roster of Division One players. They, they had Arnie Russell before you started. Before. I believe. That's, right. One. that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah, and Tyrone really came through his senior year, yep. my, my our senior year, but they just had a lot of depth, and they they played hard. They played that yep. two three zone. You guys had you yet Pat Winnie was a tremendous player. Yes, uh, you had under under Koffler, I believe was Ma- his name. Mark under Koffler. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Bennett, I mean, could, we, we had we we had uh, Andy Heck who was a younger and he was yeah. he ended up yeah. going to Notre Dame football and NFL guy. I mean, so we I mean we had some you know some really wonderful people and players, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean that that was. Well, that that time and that game and that rivalry, you know, it, it was it was great. And you mentioned Tyrone right. Shaw. I mean, no one could guard him. I mean, it was just it, forget about the ball fakes, the yeah. you know the you know he, he had it all now, and he and, and he was just unguardable. Yeah, he had a lane on his own. I mean, no one ball fakes, lane ins, tip ins. Right. I mean, right. his, he was just so savvy and just the nicest guy in the world. I mean, after the game was Bobby over, Bobby Boyd. Oh, Bobby Boy, yes. yes. Yeah, he was. I, yeah, apparently he was like the playground legend, the best playground yeah. player in the history yeah. of Alexandria. Yeah. Uh, but Michael Mur- Michael Murray, they had Brian Vaughn was a tremendous player. Mar- yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's right. That's he, right. He, That's exactly. and he passed. Uh, Doug Lovelace passed as we. He recently passed as well. Passed away as well. Wow. But they had. A, they, yeah, they just had so many players that come at you in waves. So, but anyway, anyway, so you, you get to the Capital Classic. You, you get yourself going again. Um, how did you decide to go to, to go to Duke? Um, Duke at the time, um, you know, Koshesky was probably in his first or second year. Um, it wasn't the huge powerhouse we think of it today, but it was definitely had a rich tradition. It had been to the Final Four, I believe, '76 with Jaminski and, and those guys. So, h- how did you decide to go to Duke? Well, I'll tell you. Um, you know, 
I got to know and be recruited by Coach K uh, pretty heavily earlier on in my, you know, actually at the end of my sophomore year uh, when he first saw me play at the Jell-O Fleet, um, And he always refers to that night uh, that he saw Johnny Dawkins and myself play in two separate games uh, wow. that one night in the Jell-O Fleet, that he referred to that as um, one of the bigger nights, you know, and for him in the history of Duke basketball, because that's when he saw his backcourt of the future. Um, and so I, I got to know and be recruited by Coach K and, and be very honest. I mean, obviously Duke, ACC, uh, you know, tremendous institution, you know, great school. So all the pieces, not too far from home, but not right next door either. Had a lot of things that I was looking for in an incredible campus. Um, but the difference maker for me was to be able to play for him. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I fell in love with him just like I fell in love with Coach Jenkins. And I was, mm -hmm. again, you know, lucky enough to make decisions for, to me, the right reasons. It wasn't about, you know, uh, it was about relationships. And I, you know, I tell people that all the time that if you, if you're making decisions for the right reasons, more than, more than often, you know, things are going to work out in a, in a, in a very positive way because you did it for the right reasons in the right way. And, and so being able to have a chance to play for him, um, you know, thinking that I have a chance to be a part of uh, something, you know, growing, I knew, you know, we, as you mentioned, the program wasn't what we recognize it of, of today. I mean, we had to ask Coach K when he came in to visit with me, and, and we did all the home visits at Coach Jenkins' house, which was pretty mm -hmm. cool. So all the coaches would come there to meet with me uh, mm -hmm. and my family um, in Fairfax, right there, you know, mm -hmm. where Coach still lives today. And uh, but we had to ask Coach K, you know, because other coaches were saying he's going to get fired. You know, he's not going to make it. You know, that was the rumor mm -hmm. that he was on the hot seat. And they think about that now. Who, you know, he's 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 probably the greatest of all time. And yeah. at that time, there were some you know, scuttlebutt or, you know, people didn't know if they wanted to even keep him around at Duke. And so, uh, mm -hmm. but that had to be discussed, but we believed in it. And I always remember Coach Jenkins saying to me in the kitchen of his home, all right, after we did the visit, we would kind of, you know, sit around and talk, what did you think? And have, you know, iced tea or orange <clears throat> juice or something to drink. I always remember him saying, he said, Tommy, I got a great feeling about this guy. And I, you know, obviously, you know, Coach, Coach K at the time was just, 35 years old and, you know, just a young coach who was trying he, he to coach an army, he coach an army, you know? he coached an army like, before he came right. to do and he was yeah. trying to get it going. And, and yeah. I remember coach telling me that, you know, just saying, I got a great feeling about this guy. And I always tease coach Jenkins. I said, man, I said, when you get a great feeling about, you know, the, the lottery number, make sure you call me. I said, because, the, because when you said you had a great feeling about coach K and you nailed that one, like nobody yeah. else. Yeah. You know, times have really changed because, you know, I went to UVA the next year and, we didn't have to hate Duke back then. We matter of right. fact, you know, I was I was a big fan for you. We we hated UNC back then, and then Virginia Tech had been a basketball power for many generations, and we weren't until Ralph Ralph and Othell came. So yep. we hated we hated Tech and UNC. Duke was not on our radar. We didn't hate you guys yet. And, and matter of fact, you know, we we would cheer. I would cheer for Tommy Hamilton. Yeah, you you, you, you exactly right, exactly. Right. Yeah, we hadn't arrived to that status of being of being hated. Uh, but yeah. but, but yeah, I, I get it. And I knew a lot of, you know, I, I almost thought about going to U. I mean, I thought heavily about going to UVA. I mean, that was one of my options. You know, UVA, Maryland, and Duke were probably, and Wake Forest were probably my final four if I had to pick a four, you know, foursome. But, um, but yeah, being from the state of Virginia, you know, and, and obviously UVA, what an amazing school. I mean, it's, a, it's as good as any school in the country. And so and a lot of their friends and classmates, I mean, you know, if you could, if you could pick any school to go to, Everyone wanted to, if you could pick, they wanted to go to UVA. I mean, that was the it was, choice. It was a good time. And you would have fit in perfectly because I think Ricky and Othell were just graduating. They, and they had they to go and get John. They were seniors when I was a freshman. Exactly. So then they, the next year they got out, they got John Johnson, my, That's my right. classmate. But they, 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 had, they needed a point guard. That was, that was That's a big right. weakness. That's exactly right. So, yeah. But I think, I mean, I, I love UVA, but UVA did not have that kind of, Terry Hahn was a great man and he had a great, um, gravitas about him, but UVA did not have that type of program that Coach K, you, you couldn't have known that at the time, but maybe your instinct told you, but he did not have that kind of program that Coach K was going to build at Duke. We just, well, said, we didn't really have think about this, Julie, you think about, I, I've said this all along. I said, if, mm -hmm. if the Northern Virginia, if, if the DC area as a whole, I mean, really came through for Coach K, you think about how it all started for Duke basketball. Johnny Dawkins was the first, I came after him. 
Billy King came after me. Danny Ferry came after him. Grant Hill came out. I mean, all I'm saying is that all of us were, from, I mean, so if UVA, you know, yeah. we, I mean, because that was the kind of school that we all were interested in. I mean, all of us looked yeah. at UVA. I mean, maybe Johnny, Johnny looked at Georgetown, Notre Dame and Duke. I know I yeah. was looking at UVA and Duke. Billy King looked at UVA as well. Grant Hill looked at Grant Hill's best friend went to UVA, Michael Ellison. So that was one of his oh, yeah. boys that went to UVA. I mean, so yeah, I he was UVA, you know, through and through in yeah. a lot of ways. So we always said that, man, if if somehow, you know, if UVA or some of the whatever local school had done, you know, differently, that maybe maybe yeah. we would have split up and gone different places. Yeah. But we all ended up going to Duke, which really was amazing. the difference in Coach yeah. K's rise as a coach in our program as well. So our community, Northern Virginia, Washington, D.C., the DMV, played a significant role in Duke basketball. Yeah, I never thought of it that way until you mentioned it. And UVA was always, uh, we were always knocked for not doing a good job recruiting in state not, and not just Northern Virginia. I mean, like guys like Mr. Jennings or there's, there's been so many, uh, Del Curry down, he was in Fort Defiance. There's been so many great players that UVA were, were was, uh, unable to keep at home. And it wasn't really until Ralph Sampson came until we, we kind of had the ambition to be a great program. I, I just don't think UVA had that kind of ambition. Um, I, and I, in a way, I kind of liked the, uh, it was a calmness kind of a, that we had, but Duke, you guys had that ambition. Uh, and, and, and part showed, of that, you know, part, yeah. honestly, part of that, you know, when you're in that area of the triangle and tobacco road, it, 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 it drives you. I mean, I, you know, I remember coach K saying that you think about this, in 1982, Michael Jordan hits the shot over Georgetown to win the NCAA tournament. 1983, NC State goes on an incredible run, and they win by, you know, the, the, the pass, as Derek Wittenberg would say. Yeah. Uh, but it was an air ball of a shot that gets dunked in to win at the buzzer. And I'm just saying, so 82, Carolina, 83 was NC State. And here's Duke sitting over there. Coach K even said that there was so much – excitement and energy around those two programs they kind of forgot about him which helped him because the focus wasn't on him as much of hey what are you doing or what is duke doing but you have to kind of my point of saying that is that it drives you to become you know even more than you maybe even thought you could become just because of your rivals right down the road from yes yeah and did you guys socialize with the UNC players? Did you guys play pickup together, yeah, uh, yeah. NC State? Yeah, it, that yeah. happened. Yeah, that was that's all part of it being down there. That's right. all part of the you know the the energy of how close we are, all flying mm -hmm. out of the same airport. I remember even when I was an assistant coach there, I mean, we're dropping off you know whether it's Grand Hill or Christian Leitner for one weekend for a visit, and then uh, you know the Carolina is dropping off somebody else for their. And I, I remember this specifically. Me, we were dropping off Christian Layton for after his official visit. Coach Smith and Phil Ford, they were dropping somebody off at the airport for, the, for that person's official visit. And Coach Smith yells over to Christian, see you next weekend, Christian, because he was going to visit <laughs> Carolina the next week. I mean, so it was like, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, that, that is exciting. Uh, would you say the adjustment? I mean, the ACC back then was unbelievable. We, we don't have to even name the players. I mean, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, even – you can leave that little triangle and there was great players everywhere. Everywhere. Was the, was the adjustment as big um, going to the ACC as it was when you, when you joined Pete Holbert at Woodson or was it even, was it even a bigger golf to, to you, go that, you know that level? what? I, I, I always, um, uh, I'm always very grateful for having played uh, at Woodson and for coach Jenkins, because even to, to even today, coach K would probably, if he had a number of, uh, you know, the list goes on because he's been there 41 years now, but he's had a number of uh, players that he would always say that um, that they were ready to play as a freshman because of, you know, some, because of how they were taught. I was one of the ones that he would always include in that category, which was, you know, is an amazing, you know, compliment, but it's not to me, it's to coach Jenkins. And so for me, learning, you know, the game the right way and trying to become a fundamentally sound basketball player. That's the best thing you can have going into a new environment, especially one where you're young. If you feel like you have fundamentals and you have a understanding of the game itself. And then the last part of that is having a understanding of who you are as a player. Yeah. That, that's a big right. piece to the puzzle. And so I was fortunate. I, I think, you know, it was probably harder for me to actually go from, being a freshman in high school 
than it was to be a freshman in college. And that has a lot to do with, you know, you're more mature. I wasn't, you know, 14 years old. I was, you know, 18 years old, but you still had to be taught. And I was taught a certain way uh, in high school, which allowed me to hit the ground running as a freshman in college. When did a light bulb go off and you, you're like, I got this, I can, I can do this. Did you have a game when you, uh, it just kind of came together for you and you just, and, and you were comfortable? Or you know, the, the, the moment that I really gained confidence uh, was, was uh, in practice at Duke. And it was after, mm. you know, uh, a while. I mean, it wasn't like I, you know, just, you know, hit the ground and, you know, you know that didn't happen that way. I had to learn. I had to get, you know, but, you know, things had to, I had to learn the, some of the hard knocks kind of way, you know, uh, of what college basketball is like. But the guy who made me believe uh, in myself uh, at the time when I was a you know, freshman just started was Johnny Dawkins. You know, he, he would just kind of pull me. He was just a sophomore, a year older, but he had gone through some of the same things. And he pulled me aside and just told me, listen, man, like, you know, you're, you're good. You're going to be the point guard. You, you, you need, you don't need to worry about me. I'm sliding over so I can shoot and shoot more. Um, so you just need to just get it out of your mind. Like, you know, you're playing and we need you to be ready. To, I mean, having that kind of the best player, your home guy to, um, to be able to pull you aside and tell you some things like that made all the difference in the world to me, uh, when I was a freshman. And so that was when I felt like it started to make sense to me. It clicked in for me, but it, it clicked in for me because Julian, because, I had the confidence in my, my teammates had the confidence in me, which was such a huge yeah. thing. So having great teammates makes all the difference in the world. One thing I always thought was uh, Duke kind of evolved into a real chest to chest defensive team, an amazing man to man defensive team. And you were tailor made for that. You were, you were the best defender I'd ever seen. And I ever, definitely I ever played against you. I mean, you had long arms, you had a tremendous uh, lateral speed. Uh, I, I wrote a story one time. I don't know if you read it, but, you could you could move laterally faster. Most people could run forward. So you you were actually built for his system. Is, did, did that defensive system did it evolve, or did Krzyzewski always that was a, this, a system that he always he always um, had like an army, or he got it from maybe Bobby Knight was who he learned from. So what, do you, a, what do you think that, about that? That's a that's a that's a very astute comment and question, mm -hmm. and not not about me, but about Coach K and his philosophy, uh, how he wanted to play. You know, as a when you're t and I've done this now as a head coach, I've taken over programs and have to kind of start and build. Well, one of the biggest things that you have to do is to establish an identity of how you are going to play, how you want to play. Well, I thought that was one of the biggest things that I brought to Duke basketball. I allowed Coach K and how he really wanted to be able to play pressure man to man defense. And it starts with your guards or you guys who are going to play on the ball, being able to defend out front or full court very well. And so I yeah. felt like I was a, somebody that was able to allow him to do what he really wanted to do, play the way he wanted to play. And it kind of caught on for us and yeah. we believed in it. And it yeah. made our, you know, it made us, uh, one, we were excited to play that way Two, you know, you know, he was able to recruit, you know, toward that. So recruit athletes that could play that way. And then three, it really galvanized our fan base. Uh, they enjoyed it. You know, they got excited behind it. We were, we became an exciting team to, to cheer for, to watch. And I thought that our ability to play man-to-man -man defense, play at full court, play at pressure, try to tr transition from defense to offense because we played great defense or we stole the ball. Um, we, you know, we made our opponents, you know, not be able to comfortable running their offense. Well, all that allowed us to play the style that Coach K wanted to play, which is big as anything when you're trying to build a program. Yeah, he, he taught a physical style of defense that was always okay because you always had good guarding position. So you necessarily didn't have to do that because you were so quick laterally. But the Duke players were so physical, but they always had great guarding position. So it, it wasn't a foul. It was it would frustrate UVA fans because I felt like <laughs> well we, <laughs> we we would always say that UVA was doing that. We always said that they played that they played the chess defense and pushed up under us too much that always didn't allow. So we we felt just the <laughs> we felt just the opposite. Maybe it's just, just a, yeah, maybe it's just perspective, huh? Uh, so you know your your last year at Duke, I, I remember this. Uh, you know you had such a great career. And you were you were a pure one. I mean, you're you're a point guard, 
Uh, there's never there's never a doubt what position you're going to play, even you know through your freshman year at Woodson. But I, re I remember your last couple games, your last semester, and then the tournament, you start taking more of an offensive role. And I, I don't think you had as much offense on that team, so you need you needed to do that. Um, was that a, was that a matter of you trying to work on your game and maybe think about going to the next level, or were, this is what the team needed? And you were just trying to provide that. Well, it really was. Uh, I was needed to, to to score a little bit more my senior year. Um, if you remember, you know, uh, those guys that I played with for three years were, you know, um, they, they were the class of that movie that came, you know, the, the class that saved Coach K or uh, the yeah. documentary on, you know, that, that's been put out there now. Uh, but that's Dawkins, Allery, Billis, Henderson, uh, you know, those guys, you know, that was the, the class yeah. that, so we played together for three years. So they graduate now. I'm the lone starter that's returning. Uh, but we had Danny Ferry. We had Billy King. We had Quinn mm -hmm. Snyder. We had Kevin Strickland. And so we all, that group was starting to emerge as well. But I needed to have, as you mentioned, and as you said it, was I always try to do whatever the team needed me to do. I could score. I mean, I, I you know, I, I know I was never asked to score a lot, but I was always comfortable if I had to, you know, shoot a little bit more, score a little bit more. But I was also knew when I played with Johnny Dawkins, is it better for him to shoot or me to shoot? It's better for him to shoot. And I was going to feed him as much as I could. And I understood that and loved that. But my final year, as you mentioned, and even some of those final games, uh, it called for me to try to score a little bit more. And I, you know, I tried to do it as best I could to, to help our team to be the best that we could be. Yeah, did you enjoy that? Or is your, is your natural instinct to be more of the... Well, set, I, set I, you, as you mentioned, I'm a point guard. I mean, I, I was, uh, you know, what you would refer to as a pass first quarterback, you know, like that's my forte. That's that's how I played. The only position I've ever played in the game of basketball ever in my whole life mm -hmm. was point guard. So there's no other position that I've ever tried to play or was asked to play or wanted to play. Uh, right. I always played the point guard when I was on the floor. And so very comfortable with that. You know, that's became my you know, forte of how I was going to play and try to defend as well as I could and quarterback and lead uh, is, is what I did. And um, so that, that's, that's made me who I was as a player. And I was very comfortable with that. Yeah. I mean, we did really well. Um, so uh, move on to your, uh, your coaching career. I know you have uh, like 11 more minutes here. Um, so you, you briefly um, thought about the NBA um, pro, but I, I think you pretty quickly decided you were going to go to graduate school and, and, and start thinking about coaching. Is that, is that correct? That, that's correct. I, I was yeah. drafted by the uh, no longer a team there, but uh, now the uh, uh, Seattle Supersonics, which be, now is the OKC team, Oklahoma yeah. City. But, yeah, I was drafted there, cut there, and then I was able to – I was very, very lucky again, Julian, to where, you know, it worked out for me because opportunities aren't always available in coaching. You know, I mean, if, if – the timing worked out for me to come back to Duke and start as a graduate assistant. So I was in grad school and, and also when Coach K always held the grad positions uh, for former players. So if they needed help to pay for graduate school, that was always what he wanted to use those positions for. It's another amazing thing by him that he wanted his players to have access to grad school and he would use that as the graduate assistant position. Well, I took advantage of that and that, got me into coaching. And then the next year, after my first year as a grad assistant, one of the assistants, Bob Bender, had got a head job. Mm -hmm. He left Duke to become the head coach at Illinois State. And see, here I am at 23 years old, and Coach Case calling me into his office and telling me that, you know, he wanted me to have this opportunity and I would have to leave school to take advantage of it. And he told me, he said, you know, these things don't come around. You know, like you can always go back to school if you want to, but there, there may never be a chance to, you know, kind of just go right into a full-time coaching position at a place where you've coached, uh, at a place where you've played and for a program and a coach that you've played for. It just doesn't happen so automatically. And I was just so lucky, again, being very fortunate that it came my way and the timing of it was, uh, was in my favor. And, and, and he also I, said, just the funny of this, he also said, you know, when I told him that I was thankful and I wanted to do it, he also said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Now we got to get Grant Hill. That was exactly what he said to me. So here we go again, back to our guys from Northern Virginia. So were you involved in, in recruiting Grant? Uh, Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So did you, did you know Grant uh, well? He was, you know, he's five I or did, six. He, 
yeah, yeah. he knew he and uh, he knew us meaning us michael jack michael jackson went to south lakes and grant obviously knew michael uh, michael and i were you know if not best friends very very good friends um so grant knew of us as the older guys who had come through before him of our aau teams and who we played for and all that high schools and whatever so i now here i am as a young assistant coach from the area and I'm the guy that's going to make the trips and go back to visit and Wendell Bird, a high school coach at South Lakes. Uh, his brother, Gerald Bird, was mm -hmm. my AAU coach. He was oh, Gerald sorry. and Mr. Yeah. Kitchen. Were my, so anyway, they were and my mother with my uh, funny story here. I would fly home sometimes from Duke and fly home to, you know, go recruiting. And she says, well, hey, who are you, who are you here to see? I said, well, I'm going to see. Uh, you know, this, this great Grand Hill, this kid up in South Lakes. Oh, yeah, heard of him. Great, you know, blah, blah, blah. She said, who? She said, who's coaching up there? And I said, I said, Wendell Bird. She said, Wendell Bird? She said, boy, she said, I used to babysit Wendell Bird. Is that right? But that is amazing. This funny story. I mean, so anyway, it was just, it's all kind of comes together like that. Yeah. I used to referee for a while. I bet she was a bad kid. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, we did a, uh, we did a Final Four podcast of the, of the 88 um uh, northern region final four i had a i had bill courtney you know coaches at my, oh, yeah, uh, sure. miami yeah. i had bill i had barry smith coach uh at old dominion played at old dominion the coaches at hilton high school now and i had uh, jason coleman um but 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 anyway uh russ payton who played at bucknell with bill he told a story about how when they beat south lakes um uh, they had to use the same locker room because they had water problems at, at the high school and somebody was, well, the South Lakes players were, were crying after the game because Chantilly just beat them. So Grant, Grant Hill, somehow, I, I got word back to me that Grant Hill wasn't the one who cried. So somehow he saw the podcast and he said, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't me that was crying after that game. After that game. So uh, <laughs> Listen, there, that, that, there, there was no one better than Grant Hill. Yeah. On or off the court. I mean. Class act. Um, it, no one better. And one of his uh, greatest strengths was also, in my opinion, something that, you know, he had to work with to get better at, which was he was so unselfish at times. He was too unselfish. You know, Grant was such a guy that cared about his teammates. I, very few players of his stature of talent, you know, can be your best teammate and your best player. Yeah. Like he, he was both, which is unusual to have that being the best player and the best yeah. teammate. I mean, that, that's a, I always would say that the, the greatest thing in a basketball player, and I always remember that Grant Hill was the one who I said this about, and I've, I've felt this way forever since, since him, you know, had the willingness to fit in, but also the talent and the ability to stand out. That's Grant Hill. It is. And that, that, that's as good as it gets from a, yeah. from a team sport participant, and that's Grant Hill. It was, we've had discussions on the group about, you know, why South Lakes wasn't able to win a state tournament with all the talent that they had. And one thing I remind people is Grant Hill won a national title in his first two years of college. And, he, and it was the first in Duke's history. Uh, he, Grant Hill, his best role, as you were saying, is, is a teammate. He doesn't necessarily have to be the guy that scores 25 points. He can do that, but his best role is to do, to do a little bit of everything. And that's what he did with Christian Leitner and Bobby, and Bobby Hurley, you know, you know when you guys sure. won the national title. I would, I would um, always remind people and anybody that I said, I said, you need to know this. I said, you know, we had the stigma at the time that we couldn't win, you know, the championship, the big one uh, at Duke. And, and that was going forever. I mean, that was, you know, before yeah. Coach K, that was during Coach K's time and the Final Fours. We went to five in a row, you know. But we couldn't win. And I tell people, I said, we didn't win the national championship until Grand Hill showed up. Exactly. Said, we'll never forget that. Exactly right. Um, and Tommy, I know you're running out of time. I mean, coach, you're running out of time here. Let me just uh, quickly, I, I, I did notice when you were an assistant coach and all the guys, you guys are very careful in the, the head coaching jobs that you guys would take. Coach, coach Krasewski, his um, protégés were wanted everywhere. And I remember when you're an assistant, you're an assistant for, for a while, and, and so was Johnny Dawkins. And there was no shortage of opportunities, but you guys were very careful. Was that something that was in you, or was, was Coach Krasewski telling you guys, look, you don't want just a job. You want the right job. Well, he, he would certainly guide us uh, about opportunities and ones that he felt were uh, stronger than others. 
Uh, and in, in all honesty, too, another big piece to that uh, equation there or to this answer is that we had great jobs where we were. You know, being, being an assistant at Duke is a, and a lot of times it's, it's better than a lot of head jobs. Um, so, you know, in terms of how we, it just is. I mean, you're not wanting for many things and, and you're playing at a high, at the highest level. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're working for, you know, one of the best guys ever in the business. You're learning a lot. You're, you're living in an environment in a community that, you know, uh, you know, has treated you incredibly well. You know, we've gotten to know that area. We all former players who have worked for coach K now have become his assistants. Well, you know, you're, you're, you know, the community, you know, the area, you know, the school, you know, the program, well, you're, you're learning, but you also have a lot of knowledge that you bring. And so you have a good job. I mean, you're, you're happy. And, and, and it's been a great thing. I was there for, I think I was an assistant for eight years. Uh, Johnny was probably assistant maybe for, uh, I think at least 12 uh, other guys mm -hmm. have been, you know, they've been there a long time. It's a hard place to leave, which is a great right. thing. Yeah. That makes sense. And, and, you know, and quickly with, with Harvard, uh, it's 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 interesting to think of Harvard as being David in the David and Goliath thing. Because you know, as soon as you leave Harvard, um, things are always going to work well for you. But what, what do you think about coaching at Harvard when uh, Duke is a student athlete? But Harvard, you have to get you know in, incredible students. Um, not necessarily the money's not work doesn't work out the same. Even though I'm sure there there are things that you can do. How do you like coaching in the Ivy League as compared to Michigan or Seton Hall or or, or Duke? Yeah, you know, I, I've I've been uh, again. I, I go back to that word lucky, and and uh, I'm very fortunate, you know, to have had the opportunity to come to Harvard. I mean, I've had head coaching positions, as you mentioned. Um, you know, I've been fired. I was fired at Michigan, and so within 30 days, you know, I'm named the new head coach at Harvard. And I had other opportunities when I was let go at Michigan. I was trying to decide maybe what would be the you know, not just other coaching opportunities, but other opportunities in sports and athletic administration. I was, you know, I was blown away by some of the opportunities that were, came at me because you get blinders on and you just think, you know, that you're just coaching. Um, but I was looked upon in a different way, which I really was appreciative of and flattered by, but the opportunity to come to Harvard was different. Uh, it's a brand that's uh, considered the, you know, the, the preeminent brand in all of higher education in the world. And, and I was trying to see if we could maybe build our basketball program up to a level that we could, uh, you know, comparable to what our school is. And thank goodness we've been able to do it, but we've been able to do it yeah. with some amazing people, Julian. And it makes, you know, being able to say that we represent Harvard um, and I'm the head basketball coach and I'm also uh, an executive fellow at Harvard Business School. So I teach there. Mm -hmm. Uh, do things at the Harvard Kennedy School of Government as a Hauser leader. I'm not just a coach here, which fulfills me. I, I, being uh, being just a basketball coach is not enough for me. And so I'm allowed and able to do things that Harvard feels was uh, uh, is in all of our best interest. You know, so I'm bringing value uh, beyond the 94 by 50 is what I like to say. And, and that means a lot to me. And, and I'm proud to be able to do that. Been here now 14 years. I can't believe it. Wow. Um, it it's become our home. Yeah. Do, do you have any other, uh, I mean, obviously we're, we're, we're young people. Do you have any other challenges or, or do you, do you see yourself maybe coaching Harvard um, for the, um, you know, ending your coaching career at Harvard? Well, I, I would, uh, if, if Harvard would want to sign me up for, for, for tenure uh, or, or forever, I, I would be hard for me to say no to that. So, That's awesome. uh, but who has a, I don't have a crystal ball. Who knows if yeah. I'll, you know, be able to stay here forever, but uh but it has, you know, it's an amazing place with so many positives. Every place has its challenges, as we know. Right. And, you know, non-scholarship, you know, we everything is need-based financial aid. So we'll lose kids sometimes who can go to, say, Georgetown for free or Stanford for free. And we're asking them to pay something to come to Harvard. Well, that, that's a tough sell. Um, but overall, we have found this to be a wonderful fit and makes a lot of sense. I. I view myself as a teacher and as an educator. I get that from my mother um, more so than just a coach. And so this environment allows me to, to do exactly that. Yeah, I'm, and I'm glad your mother's doing well. I, I should have, that was the first thing I should ask. I, she was a fixture at, at the Woodson Games. Oh, yeah. And we, oh, know, yeah. We all, yeah, we all, we all knew your, who your mother was. So I'm, glad she, yeah. I'm glad she's doing well. Thank you. I'll make sure that she, she knows that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Tommy, look, it's been 40, 45 minutes. I wanted to get you out of here. I know you had some things you had to take care of. I appreciate all the time. And, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're very proud to call you one of our 
one of our own. You've really done some incredible things as a player, as a coach, and as a person. So, you know, we're just we're just so proud that we knew you. And, I, I you know, that I played against you was such an yeah. honor. Um, and I, and I, yeah, so just – and thanks, thank thanks so you. much for doing this. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. It, it's an honor to – to be one of one of the group, um, and, and we have a tremendous group, as you know, and it, and it's wonderful that you're doing what you're doing, Julian, to make this possible for our group to to maintain, Thank you. you know, connections to to share our stories and our history, our shared history.